Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to part two of my hard techno button template explanation. Basically, this template has been creating live during my live stream session. It's every two Monday. You can come around and participate. I create the track from scratch. Last week we talked about each element of the track, the MIDI, the pattern, and so on. And today we're gonna focus more on the global track idea, the arrangement, automation, variation, mixing, and mastering. All right, so let's have a listen. Alright, so that gets you an idea. So before to jump into each part of the arrangement, let's talk a little bit about the idea and how it came. So basically, always during my live stream, I try to experiment a lot, trying different elements, different combination. And actually, I had the main idea that until the last moment, I kind of get rid of. It was still this three cent, which was still part of the... This main melody, I was a little bit on the fence, was not sure if to build a track around that. I was thinking to maybe just put at one point. On the end, I decided to use it as the main lead and it was this two cent as well. This one and this one that I kept. And so the idea was to build a track around this. And like I said, I have another scent that was almost the main lead and I get rid of and I need to replace it by something. Uh, because the thing is this main lead I felt like was too different from the this melody here. So I had a kind of the feeling having two tracks in one track and one, when I was going from one scent to another, it felt like two different tracks. So during the second live stream, I think, where I was creating a track, I tried to incorporate vocal and didn't really manage to, didn't really sound how I wanted. And so to replace this main lead, I said, okay, let's try to incorporate a vocal and having maybe like one rhythmical kind of vocal. So that's, I took back the same vocal I had during the live stream and I tried to find a moment I like and trying to get something rhythmical and I came up with something like this. And that's worked pretty well in the track. Then I tried to find from the vocal, you can, see i can show you the sample it's like a long it's basically the whole vocal of a track and trying to pick up different parts of the track and you can see like here i put them in a drum rack and then i could play around and kind of reorganize a little bit the lyrics my way and trying to find something interesting and that's why it's pl what is playing here and here you can hear it's like kind of a weirdo dope flow take it to your head yo wax off wax on daniel son i kick boss damn baby you know so yeah I kind of changed the order of the lyrics and everything and decided to use that for other part. That being said, the vocal were really a final addition because I already have pretty much the main idea of the structure uh, with the lead one that I have made during the live stream where I had the main part and then I have a kind of a verse where I loop us and change a little bit the pattern and then bring it back. But the thing is on the second part there is a twist because the lead has this scatter effect which is kind of make it sound uh, like this. Compared to the first part of the track where it sound like this. But yeah, the global idea was to, okay, build, build the intro, having a kind of a pre-chorus where you introduce the sand, then you will have the break where you build tension and then you drop. Uh, it's going into the chorus one uh, with the drop and then you add drums, percussion, uh, like the scent. And then you will have a break where we will, you will have the verse where you have this scent, which is kind of low pass here. You can hear. It's more kind of the quieter uh, moment of the track and uh, then that's where the vocal was pretty handy because I could put like some longer vocal here. Yeah, no, no flow, wax off, wax on, son, I... Before to introduce back the main... Uh... Before I introduce again the main lead and then the main lead to don't be the same like as the first chorus uh, in the second chorus i decided to have this scatter effect uh, with you which add a lot of variation and then you have wax off, wax. this vocal as well who add on top and then some stab and other element playing around obviously i play with the drum as well uh, but i will explain it later another thing i've done is i have a lot of uh, kind of kick rolls which mean like every at the end of the bar or every four bar or two bar depends sometimes eight bar you have this kind of 
rolling kick. So that's gonna add a lot of variation during the track. So yeah, that was kind of the key point of the global ID arrangement. Now we're gonna go each part, each part how I introduce everything to understand the arrangement a little bit better. But I, I like to do like this to have the, a bit of the bigger picture before to start to go into uh, big detail and each part. So yeah, we start with the intro. We're gonna have a locket straight up playing and we have the vocal which is playing as well here it's kind of a very short intro with the vocal and then it allowed me to as well have the vocal uh, rhythmical playing after and you're gonna hear so it's and then we start so we have the hats coming straight up. This vocal as well, Mori playing. This also is something I try to do a lot every eight bar to have a kind of a drum feel or like a little bit of something different to don't just add a new element like this. So yeah, this is something I try to implement a lot during this track. And then yeah, slowly slowly we introduce a layer. For now it's mainly drums, but you can see after from here it's gonna more like stab this is still kind of the intro and then again drum feel so always here trying to do something a little bit different you don't always have the same so here was kind of a rolling and here is more like a reverse kick with the snare as well playing. And then we have the stab who's gonna start to arrive. And we have the main lead coming. The right is playing strong as well, you can hear. I call it pre because at this point we have a lot of hats, we have the right playing, we have the most of the stab as well playing, we have the vocal, so yeah, it's pretty already driving part of the track. Then I had the snare, uh, I explained this last week, but I had the snare as well, there it's pretty handy because on the break I will have a snare build up and it allowed me to kind of have a nice smooth transition because you, you have the snare playing every two bit there and then it goes into the break playing every two bit and then every every bit and then it play faster and faster and bring build the tension. Alright, so a few things to uh, enter in the break. Obviously the idea is like now we started in the pre-chorus, we slowly fade in the, the main lead and in, during the break the idea is to bring up the tension with the lead and then you drop with the lead. But there is different, there is way to do that. It's often very hard to transition from the one part into the break because it's very abrupt. If you remove just the kick and the bass straight up, it sounds weird. There is different way you, ha you can uh, use a transition. So I have this for example. You can hear that first there is a locket on the kick. So the kick is still playing, but there is a locket. But I get rid of some of the hats as well in the same time. And then when the kick stops playing, you can hear the snare roll uh, is starting to accelerate. Another thing with accentuating the tension is this vocal, which is now repeating over and over. Compared to at the beginning was just playing once. You have this riser scent as well who was starting to play before which is just like a scent uh, which have a, with the pitch bend going up. Yeah, the way I build the tension and release here is that you have this, vo is with mainly with the vocal. Because it's playing on repeat and just the last two bar it played the phrase and I cut it just right before the, fr the, the, the end of the phrase to kind of create uh, this nice effect. So yeah, it's... Another thing as well which works well is because I bring down the filter of the main lead so like it's kind of getting muffled 
and then right before to drop I reopen it again uh, so that's part of the things that help to build the tension you have the bit of the riser as well which is kind of a washout effect that's gonna help and yeah usually it works well when you have a snare build up or like a percussion build up you stop like a two or four bar before I mean depends but you need to stop before and then having an element uh, which is kind of creating the tension so here is basically the vocal because it was on repeat and then the guy finished uh, his lyrics so we know that building the tension is finished and now it's gonna be the release and then the drop so yeah we drop with no drum and the send fully open and then you still have your kick roll and then you're gonna very quickly have some uh, hats coming up <laughs> This perk is coming. Add a bit of input and energy. More drums. The scent is coming. Okay, so here very energetic and uh, driving moment where we reintroduce the vocal uh, to get these nice groovy things it's answering with the stab as well you see the stab is playing and then the the vocal and you have also the perk as well which is playing as well so yeah <laughs> Okay, so here comes the moment where we're gonna need to get rid of this main lead. This is always a bit tricky because uh, it's a very strong lead and you get very used and then uh, when you remove it, you kind of always kind of feel something is empty or it's a too abrupt change and it's always very tricky to kind of get rid of. When it's like this, sometimes what I like to do is I kind of, I kind of keep it, but I kind of loop a certain part of the melody. So here you can see it's like the end of the melody. I loop it and you loop as the filter and this way uh, you get something like more like But here obviously what's gonna help with the transition is the vocal because you have in the break this So yeah, here what's gonna help between uh, getting rid of the main lead is obviously the vocal because it's kind of playing again here So this kind of helped to get rid of the main lead because now we focus a bit more on the vocal. Uh, you can see that here to help with the transition, I first get rid of the ride. I uh, see the ride was playing here and it's not playing here anymore. And then we go from full on all of the drum until no drum. Uh, this is again, it's great to create contrast with high dyna dynamics. So having something very busy and then going something into more quiet or the opposite going from something very quiet to something very busy straight up. That thing does work. And here as well to help with the transition, we have this uh, stab which straight up play. And again, it's gonna this one this time is gonna play as well with the with the vocal. They're gonna answer each other, so that's why it's it's a bit smoother here. Yeah, I could even. Uh, So this was a try I was like okay this part I, I could have continued like this but I felt like it was too similar and uh, like this one was playing every every four bits or so and then after it's playing every two bits so it was kind of uh, weird so I say okay why not to try this vocal which is at the intro like this combination of vocal uh, again here and it actually work so yeah that's what is playing here now with <laughs>
Okay, so here again we have a short kind of break drum feel. You can see that still I have all of the kick roll every now and then, every every now and then. So it's important to always add variation. And then after every like end of eight bar or sixteen bar, uh, I have this kind of more drum feel, and it helps us all with the transition and bring something new. So here the the vocal combination ends, and then we I keep still the. But you can hear that uh, now there is this vocal who is coming as well. A little bit how it was in the in the previous part. Yeah, slowly, slowly we're gonna open the lead again you know, to bring it back, and then we're gonna go into the break three. Okay, before to go into the special uh, drop, let's see what's happening here. So we bring up the lead, so we need to obviously like kind of the ring is coming back, so we need to again like have a break down to kind of build again the tension uh, for the around the lead, and then after drop with the lead. Like I said before, here there is a variation of the lead, which is kind of making it super interesting. There is the side trans bass gonna drop, so it's very interesting to really build a nice tension here again. Same recipe, you're gonna have a snare roll. <laughs> We have again the vocal which is repeating and then here instead of having just one like a sentence playing you have two what i do as well you can see here the filter i bring up the filter of the lead and then i bring it back down when the vocal is playing like the long sentence there is also like auto pan uh, going on which means like the you, you can hear the vocal going from the left to the right and then coming back to the left which is a very nice movement instead of being just steady you will gonna have the lead as well who's gonna start to getting scattered like this you see the more you go in the break the more scattered the scent get you have also the riser which is kind of a washout effects going on and yeah you have also still always like some sfx obviously for the transition i haven't talked about that but yeah so yeah first part of the break building the the tension with the snare roll the rising scent the vocal which is repeating then we start to build up everything and then half of the break we stop everything the vocal is just playing by itself the main lead is going around the head and then it drop. Pretty effective drop to be honest between the side trans bass line and the uh, scattered lead is uh, works really well and then it's the same idea done uh, before we're gonna have like every eight bar end of eight bar like a kind of a drum feel or like small break to add new element so here we're gonna add the vocal but you're gonna hear it's different than before wax off, wax off. And so this vocal, I actually, when I was doing the build up and trying to listen with the drop, uh, it's actually a sentence which is here. Wax up, wax up. And so it's just before the drop. So basically, how it, how I think about this idea is, I play the build, I play the build up, the drop, and then I was like, oh, actually, at the point, if it was repeating the sentence from the break, could sounds good. And I try, it just work. So it's kind of a recall from the um, the break. It's also great because it's changed from the classic. Uh, that you have the whole track it's, and it's actually this one works better than this one so yeah it just works well and then slowly slowly we're gonna add drums and percussion yeah.
Okay, so here's what happened. Because obviously you arrive at the point where, like I said, I had hats, I had percussion, the scent is coming. And we arrive at this part where it's pretty energetic, a lot of uh, hats, percussion, a uh, very climax driving moment of the track. So you cannot have this going for too long because you're gonna very quickly get bored. You need to add variation. And like I said before, wh what I like to do is playing with the dynamics or so having something very low in energy to going something very high or the opposite, something very high in energy and then going into something very very slow and here we're gonna do both actually first we're gonna go from something high in energy to something with no energy you can see here i get rid of all of the drum and the perk and then straight up we're gonna go from something low to back to something very high in energy where here we're gonna even add the ride on top of it to make it even more driving so yeah you get this pretty cool <laughs> You kind of get a revival of drop of this drop too here except that even here now you have this vocal as well straight up playing and then yeah we bring back all the drum and then we have the snare coming with percussion we have also the the stab actually is, so that's something which is different with this drop is that straight up you drop with this scent which is pretty effective this scent and so yeah So yeah, and yeah, after you build again with the drum, the ride, the snare. And then we have the final break, which is kind of built exactly the same like the first break uh, with the vocal and then after saying the sentence at the end. So like this we could have get rid of this with a low pass filter so the main lead and we already like I said we had it during the break uh for example to avoid to have a true brutal transition i always like for example straight up get rid of the right and here i even get rid of the height and the hats and then i build everything and then you can see when it drop i get rid of this perk the, ba the saturn's baseline is not there anymore uh, and then we go into the outro where the outro is kind of a classic where every eight bar or so you get rid of element hats perk so nothing crazy you can see like the stab they are playing for eight bar and then they are not playing and uh... and yeah slowly slowly we get rid of the hats <laughs> And then we just finish with that. All right, so that gives you an idea of the arrangement. Now let's talk about uh, modulation variation. The first thing uh, I've done a lot here is this kick roll. You can see it's like this chopped kick drum. I basically freeze and flatten my kick and then I play like a roll, uh, you know, like kind of these things. And with the kick is working well because you have this kind of rolling every end of the bar or two bar or four bar, eight bar. And then sometimes it's more classic. So yeah, here I really like work to have different patterns, not always the same, but obviously they repeat along the track, but I have like probably uh, five or six different uh, different patterns that I play uh, along the track. So at uh, the intro is playing way much more, and then obviously you can see it's a bit more sparse after. It's just something subtle that you don't really pay attention, but really add a lot of variation. One of the ma major variation is with the vocal as well, like I explained, uh, having two different type of... This one, which is rhythmical, but also after, during the second part. I have more this one wax off, wax on. and then having a longer phrases for for example uh, the intro or for the break you can have as well and yeah in terms of automation it's a mainly uh, the 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 lead so the lead it will be this low pass filter obviously to make it brighter or, or a bit more muffled like to bring it more in the front backward build tension by opening it kind of like a filter i also have the side chain which is automated this is just because uh, for the break i don't want the side chain because during the break having this pumping effect uh, it sounds weird that's what i've done it and then you have this cutter effect you remember which is the Trancy stuff like this, which play after and not at the beginning. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Then after it's just like, yeah, some EQ8 to fade it, fade out. All right, let's talk about mixing. So if you're familiar with my video, you know what I'm gonna say, 90%, I mean, in my opinion, 90% of your mix is depending of what element you decided to put it together. If you make sure you 
output element that uh, sonically fit well together uh, and that uh, that when you add a new element you almost doesn't need to EQ or mix it's already sounds good then therefore you don't really have mixings to do because everything is good at the beginning one advice i can give you before to start to put EQ compressor whatever onto every every single track the balance is actually something pretty important like having making sure everything is at each level fortunately this is something like pretty hard to teach because every track is different case and song it will be something different but the way me i like to do my level is like like i said every time i add a new track i try to make sure it's at the right level compared to before and then if at the end i, I need to re-level everything i will start with uh, the kick then add the hats then the bass then the leads a little bit like in the the same uh, order than here and yeah this is something very like underrated we take this for granted but it's really something uh, that you need to focus on and if you can check you're gonna see most of my track doesn't really have like mixing uh, stuff on it but here it's like you but it's more like for sound design than really like mixing it's really like a kind of shape here is my rumble so same it's not really um, mixing it's just because you don't want a high frequency in your low end in your bass i mean not here not in your rumble because it sounds horrible this eq it's for sound design because you're gonna see if i remove this completely change the tone of the sound yeah here's the same it's for tone purpose obviously it's not a mixing then what I will do sometimes that can happen I will EQ obviously and usually I cut frequency I don't need and I boost the one that feel that's gonna help the the element to shine into the track so for example here this hat was this I felt it really helped with the clarity of the hat and in the track it making pop up a little bit uh, more pretty subtle i reckon but yeah and then i will cut the low frequency if i don't need this is like the debate or should you cut everything or no uh, in a track like this where you have like plus 20 track more than 20 track uh, you're gonna need some space especially with hats where you have a multiple layer of hats of snare a lot of scent noisy super so it's usually a very rich uh, track with a lot of element so i will try to cut as much as i can so like this uh, it leaves space for the rest it's true that if you have a track where you don't have that many element then maybe it's worth it to don't cut because it's gonna kind of help to glue everything together here no because there is so many things that just in terms of hats you are already pretty uh, rich and the uh, same here, I EQ. Here is to, this is to boost the open hat, I think. Obviously I cut in the same time and I boost around here. It's really like every track has a certain character and like you have to find out which around which frequency that enhances the character and usually as well that's what make it stand out in the mix or in your track and, yeah, and then I cut also so often the very high high because it's very noisy and you don't really need so this you always have to be careful because sometimes you're gonna get a sound too muffled if you do too much again it's case by case you have to listen in the context of the of the track as well and yeah a bit of a cue this track because it's a lot of element I but again it's nothing crazy to be honest uh here nothing you, you can see how I always cut and uh, there is a certain frequency like with the belly cue I would just boost it and you can see yeah, I always do the same Sometimes I receive, there is a frequency I don't like, I will cut. Yeah. yeah, this is almost sound design because it's really put the sound more in the front. They are here, like, I had a lot of EQ because I kind of struggled with this sound because it was very, because of the oscillator I use with the melt and then after I have detune on the other half fuzz, it's very noisy, noisy and I have to, to kind of... Uh, EQ to refocus. This I really struggled. You can see I have multiband as well. Was ready to try to cut the harshness and to make it a little bit smoother, a bit more nicer so by reducing the harshness, by reducing as well the noise and the higher frequency. So yeah, a lot of boosting and cutting here and there. Then you have the stab again. 
Again, cutting what I don't need and boosting the frequency I feel is good. Then we have the other stab. Again, you see. I've been like quite drastic on this uh, track. I'm not always that much curing and everything, but for this track, I, because I had so many elements, I had two. Uh, and then the riser as well. I don't know if I, yeah, again, a cue like quite. Yeah, because before to talk about the vocal chain, let's talk about the reverb. You can see I put my reverb all the time in insert. Uh, this is just a personal choice. You could put it as a return. A lot, most people do as a return and then just send. I just like on the track. I don't know. It's a, a habit I have. You have drum bus as well. You can find a lot of drum bus on some of the track. It's really depend. I like to use drum bus because it's kind of a uh, great to kind of glue everything at uh, at the end of the chain of your chain of your track you have the compressor uh, which gonna put a little bit things more in the front in your face i like to use the crunch because it's gonna have some mid high frequency transient it's gonna act like as a gate so it can reduce the data of your reverb or your sound so yeah pretty great and yeah distortion but it's for sound design purpose so it's not really not mixing and yeah you, you can see how i don't use that much compressor case i will use compressor for example here i use on the lead it's a kind of a session compression basically is the vocal uh, compressing the the lead so basically there is always a moment during the break where the vocal and the lead play in the same time and they kind of overlap each other into in terms of frequency i needed to prioritize one and i pre decided to prioritize the vocal so what is happening is when the vocal is playing it's triggering the, the the compressor so it kind of duck a little bit the volume of the lead let's be fair it's not a crazy ducking you're gonna see You see, it's just a few dB of reduction, but that's just help. But yeah, finally, I've done a little bit of panning with the stab because I put a little bit one on the left, one on the right. Like I said, it was quite a busy track, so I had to EQ a lot. I had to pan. It was not an easy one to mix, I, I must recon. All right, now let's talk about the mastering. So this is what I would call homemade mastering. I call it like this because uh, I will always recommend the master to be done by uh, someone who does that for a living, like with the proper room treated, the proper equipment, even though that this is arguable. Just someone which has more experience and also someone who's gonna be a new fresh pair of ears because what can happen it's like you work so much into your track that you cannot really see the mistake uh, your track has and that happened plenty of time of me where i made my own master but then i send the pre-master to a label and then they send me back the master and i compare to mine and now that I'm, and I'm like oh how i did i miss this on my track like this very harsh frequency or this so yeah i always recommend to make it mastered by someone else. But I also recommend to know a little bit about mastering to be able to do what I call like a homemade mastering, which means like you can kind of getting close to a professional master just so at least you have an idea how you track uh, will sound once master also if you want to compare to other if you want to try into a club uh, it's great to have a little bit of knowledge to kind of mainly make it a bit louder kind of rebalance add a bit of stereo do a bit of glueness you know these kind of things so we often recommend to pick up the busiest part of the track the first thing i done is eq because i felt it was missing a bit of high And then I use my mastering chain. So I made plenty of template on this channel and uh, I was kind of always using more or less the same chain. And I say, okay, you know what? Let's make a rack to make my life easier. So I put it in the description if you want to find out more about this rack. But yeah, first it's always a bit of uh, glue compression. This is going to help glue, uh, put things more in the front as well, I feel. So let's deactivate everything. Usually I will always set the attack around 30 milliseconds and then the release around here and the ratio at 4 and then I will play with the threshold uh, until I get usually 3 to 5, 6 dB of reduction but you can see for this track I actually haven't done that much. One thing which is important is to EQ the input because you don't want your low end to trigger your uh, compression otherwise it's straight up your kick which and your bass which are the, the most energetic part of the truck that's gonna trigger the compression so they're gonna compress your kick you don't want that you want more like a global compression so if you basically cut this frequency basically it's gonna compress more like just the, the peak because that's what's gonna be catched by the compressor and that's what's gonna kind of help glue everything here we had just a q8 with a locket at 30 hertz a little bit of boost i used the bass boost which is basically this eq and this air bass device this is like a kind of a resonator so it's gonna add the red frequency resonance around there To 
To be honest, the low end was pretty already solid, so I didn't done much. Basically, the high boost is gonna be uh, this. So always boosting the mid high. Here again, I didn't done much. You know, it's always have to be subtle on the master. Then I had this mod uh, that I didn't use. It's usually like to kind of reduce certain uh, frequency that I found can be a bit muddy. For this track, I didn't find any, so I didn't put. Then I had this uh, utility and EQ8 in mid side mode, which uh, I used to kind of add some stereo, but it doesn't really add stereo. It's just gonna enhance a little bit the stereo you already have, but it's very, very gentle. Uh, you're gonna hear. I wish Ableton has the proper stereo, like quite enough for like, at least for mastering or this kind of. Pretty subtle, but it's there. And then you have two saturator, which are mapped to this macro, which just gonna add some harmonics. You're gonna gain in passive loudness. You have this warm, which is this color limiter. So this doesn't really limit. I mean, you could see it like he's catching just a few peaks, but it doesn't really limit. I like to use this device because the, the saturation and the device in general add a bit of warm, add a little bit, I don't know, make kind of the sound a little bit more thick and add a bit of depth as well. It's hard to explain, but yeah. Kind of enhance it somehow. And then I have two limiter, which gonna, uh, allow you to really get to the loudest point you can that's just like two because of one because you have two limiting which are more like gentle with one db it's better than having just one uh. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this track. Hope you liked this video. Uh, you can grab the template. It's a great way to support me. The link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye-bye.